In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When I was a kid, Reformation services, celebrations, and Lutheran schools and churches were always on October 31st. And one thing I remember, beside the fact that our Lutheran school got the day off, which made for some great trick-or-treating, was that everyone talked about things that happened a long time ago. And it was a long time ago. 507 years, to be exact, on October 31st, 1517, when an obscure monk walked up the steps of the castle church in Wittenberg and nailed 95 theses on the church door. That's Wittenberg, Germany, folks not Wisconsin. There were 95 statements, sentences that he was ready to debate with any responsible individual. From the time that I first heard that story as a child in a Lutheran grade school in Chicago, been one of my favorites. Why? I guess there's something different about nailing anything on a church door. And now the kids are going to go out of church and they're going to say, how do you nail something on that door? But I tell you what, it was no big deal in Luther's day. Everyone nailed things on a church door. No newspapers, no printing presses, no mail service, no email. The church door was the community bulletin board, kind of like the wooden poles on State Street in Madison, where college kids staple their announcements and notices, and those poles look and feel like porcupines. They put up birth announcements in Luther's day. They put up wedding invitations. They put up help wanted notices. Today, people get the idea that Luther was just looking for a fight. No. He wasn't trying to make trouble with those 95 theses. He was taking a chance, a really big chance. And he paid dearly for that. Because a church of his day wasn't into debate and discussion. It was into obedience and following the party line. Now please indulge this old preacher for telling his favorite Reformation story on himself. And I apologize if you've heard it before. Our Lutheran grade school in Chicago reenacted the nailing of the 95 Theses every year. Only they wouldn't let us use real nails. Teachers would take scotch tape and make a loop out of it and stick it on the back of a piece of parchment paper. And then one of the kids would hit it with a plastic hammer and it would stick up on the church door. Now, truth be told, in eighth grade, I was selected to play Martin Luther. And I brought a couple of carpet tacks and a real hammer. And did Pastor Cohn ever get upset? We learned all about the persecutions and tortures and burnings at the stake and heresies and book burnings of the 16th century that all became a part of Reformation history. And I think Pastor Cohn threatened me with worse that day. I almost felt like Luther in front of the Pope saying, and some of you folks will actually understand this, here stay ich. Ich kann nicht anders. God help me. Here I stand. I can't do anything else. 
God help me. And our text today is the text the pastor of the Castle Church in Wittenberg used for the funeral sermon of Martin Luther in February of 1546. It was our first lesson that was read today. Just the first words. Then I saw another angel flying high in the air with an eternal message of good news. Angels are always messengers in the Bible. And like the angel of Revelation, Martin Luther proclaimed the good news of the gospel like another angel, the title of this sermon. The Reformation is a story most Lutherans are familiar with, but once you get past nailing those theses to the door, most Lutherans don't know or care why Luther did it or what was in those 95 theses. And believe me, they're, they're rather long. Quick quiz. How many of you are lifelong Lutherans? I expect a lot of names up there, or hands up. Okay, how many of you have been Lutherans for five years? 10 years? 20 years? 50 years? So how many of you Lutherans, many of you lifelong Lutherans, how many have read Martin Luther's 95 Theses? How many have read one thesis? That's about what I thought. And if I sound frustrated, let me assure you, I'm not frustrated with you. I'm frustrated that we have a synod where many of our children think, and I say this from experience in confirmation classes for 40 some years, they think that Martin Luther was black, led freedom marches in my neighborhood in Chicago, and said, I have a dream. Why the misunderstanding? Perhaps their parents also believe Martin Luther was black. After all, most of them weren't around in the 60s to know the difference. So memo to parents, or in some cases to grandparents, please educate yourself about the Reformation and teach your kids and grandkids Because believe me, they're not going to hear about it in a public school. We need to know why we're Lutherans. If we want to remain Lutherans. The Reformation was more than a fight over church politics. And more than a fight between North and South Europeans. The gospel was at stake. By the time Luther came along, indulgences, the practice of selling... Forgiveness, not only for the living, but for the dead as well, was a common practice. Hey, Pope Leo X had to pay for St. Peter's Basilica somehow. It took more than a hundred years to build and pay for it. That's what you usually hear about in the Reformation, at least in Lutheran sermons. The fact of the matter was that after all the money was spent, No one knew how to get to heaven any longer. According to the church, salvation came to anyone who was good enough or who could afford to pay for it. Luther always kept the gospel central in his theology. Today, some churches have forgotten what the gospel is. Jesus was born. He lived, he died, he was buried, he rose from the dead. That was God's plan for our salvation. Now salvation is ours by faith in Jesus. That's the basis of the Reformation. Scripture alone, grace alone, faith alone was how Luther put it. Justification by grace through faith was the central message 
that got Luther into so much trouble. Now somehow that just doesn't sound like such a big deal today, does it? But it is. After 500 years, wouldn't you think we'd have this gospel business down pat by now? But today, we see Lutheran meaning just about whatever someone wants it to mean. Today, the three major Lutheran denominations, all claiming to be Lutheran churches of the Reformation, can't get along. The ELCA has women preachers, allows lodge membership, women preachers. Nationwide headlines were made when it affirmed the rights of practicing homosexuals, male or female, to be pastors in their church. As long as they are in a committed relationship, whatever that means. They even developed a, a service to recognize same-sex marriages. Who cares? The Bible, not Pastor Heim, not Pastor Pet, not the LCMS, the Bible says all of that is wrong. The Bible has lost its authority in the church. Martin Luther never winked or looked the other way at open sin and perversion and abomination. On the other hand, today the Wells, Wisconsin Synod, criticizes, criticizes our Missouri Synod's liberal doctrine. Well, I'll tell you what. I can't remember the last person that called me a liberal. Our Missouri Synod returns the charges of the Wisconsin Synod and says they're legalistic and fundamentalist, fundamentalist. Do any of us know what the Reformation, Reformation means anymore? Where's the pure doctrine of our Savior in all of this? We live in a predominantly Roman Catholic part of Wisconsin. There was a time when Reformation Day was synonymous with Catholic bashing in Lutheran churches. How long is it going to be before we Lutherans realize that if a person believes in Jesus as his personal Lord and Savior, that Jesus is the only way to salvation, that person is going to heaven. Now, officially, the Roman Catholic Church doesn't believe that. Officially, the Catholic Church believes that we participate in our own salvation by our good works, by being good enough. But I lived in Pulaski for a lot of years. And I golfed every Thursday for 30 years with some very devout Catholic car dealers who didn't buy into that who did believe that Jesus alone is the way to salvation. And my friends are all in heaven today. And I can't wait to rejoin my old buddies as long as they don't have a Thursday tea time for us before Christmas. If we were to park in front of the throne of Jesus on Judgment Day, there won't be any license plates that say, L-C-M-S, E-L-C-A, W-E-L-S, or Catholic, Baptist, Methodist, what have you. There will only be one plate, Christian, not good enough, or rich enough, or tried hard enough, just Christian. People who believe that Jesus is their Savior. That's what the gospel is about. Now I can tell you as I've told congregations in Wisconsin for more than 50 years now, there are differences, important fundamental differences between Lutherans and Catholics and Baptists and so on. Otherwise we'd all belong to the same church, wouldn't we? It does make a difference 
which church you belong to, especially if you make it a point to know what your church teaches and believes. But that doesn't mean that every person I meet who is not a Missouri Synod Lutheran is going to hell. Any more than it means every person who is a member of the Missouri Synod is going to heaven. As I said earlier, just Christians who believe that Jesus is their Savior. The heritage of the Reformation is the pure and simple proclamation of the gospel of Jesus. But we have to do more than say the words. We know that Jesus lived and died and rose again to save us. We sing a mighty fortress is our God. We're proud to be Lutherans, but be sure you know what that means. Hey, why not just go home and Google Martin Luther 95 Theses when you get there? Do it this afternoon or sometime this week, and be ready. It's long. But be sure you proclaim that gospel fearlessly, as Martin Luther did. Don't fall into the trap, as many pastors do today, and as I fear some professors at our seminaries are teaching our future pastors. Don't fall into the trap of defending the gospel at the expense of proclaiming it. Don't point fingers of contempt or hate at other Christian people when you can offer the loving, helping hand of the gospel. The text today is a good one. We should all be angels, announcers, messengers of the gospel of Jesus. That is the heritage that the Lutheran Reformation has given us. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith until life everlasting. Amen.